Hello everyone, welcome. So, SSC CGL Tier 2 is just around the corner. In a couple of days, you will be sitting for your Tier 2 exams. So, uh, you know, this is the right time uh, to, to, you know, uh, f focus on things which will ensure that we do not mess up our Tier 2 paper, right? Uh, the preparation, the content that needed to be done, the practice that needed to be done, all of that you have already done, right? You cannot add on it anything substantial in this next couple of days. So whatever you have done to uh, create your capability to answer those questions, to take the paper, to, uh, you know, uh, plan your paper, strategize your paper, those are already there. Uh, you would not add anything substantial in the next couple of days. But what you can do is that you can ensure that you get the best out of yourself in the exam. And, uh, you know, uh, there are a lot of stuff that happens in a competitive exam that uh, hampers that getting out uh, the best of ourselves. And uh, fears are definitely one of them or the most uh, important out of all of them, right? And in the case of SSC CGL Tier 2, especially this year, we are mostly talking about three uh, fears that are dominating the mind of every aspirant. And those are fear of new pattern, fear of competition and fear of failure. So these are the three major fears that is holding back uh, you, my dear students, from giving your best. Right. And obviously this lecture uh, would uh, benefit all of them who are taking tier two. But then anyone who is not taking tier two, but or, or but but is expected to take SSC CGL next year, or even the other exams, would benefit uh, a lot from this session because it is more or less general to all competitive exam. So coming back to SSC CGL tier two, uh, you must have noticed that uh, on the uh, post section of our YouTube in the community section of our YouTube, we had run a poll on uh, SSC CGL's uh, tier 2 aspirants top fears. There were more than 200 responses till the time, you know, when I was recording this lecture, when I am recording this lecture, there had to be more than 200 re responses. And what I found uh, would most probably uh, be uh, uh, the, the also scenario uh, at the end of the uh, poll too, and which is that pattern change because there was fear of pattern change, fear of new, fear of new pattern. So that is uh, the biggest fear of all. 40% of students uh, are uh, afraid of what is going to come. What would be its difficulty level? What are the changes that they would need to, they would need to do uh, in this changed scenario? So that was first fear. Second fear was competition, fear of competition. What if our preparation is less than our competitors? What if our competitors perform better than us, right? That was 35% had that as the major fear. And uh, the finally, the last uh, uh, but not the least is the fear of failure. What would happen if I fail this exam? What would my parents say? What would my friends say? How would I move ahead? All of these negative thoughts comprise as the main fear of 25% of students. So this is how, uh, you know, these, these fears are uh, jeopardizing your chances of uh, performing in the exam. You must be the, you might be the best of the prepared uh, uh, students, but you might still not clear the exam because you have, you know, allowed these fears to dominate your mind space, right? So what are we going to do today? We are going to see how to handle these fears or rather how to conquer these fears. So fear number one, let's take in the priority. Fear number one was fear of new. 40% people think this to be the dominating fear of this year because this year the pattern has changed, right? So how to handle it? First of all, first of all, the thing that would uh, assuage your fear a little, would, would reduce your fear a little is that know th that it is for everyone, that knowledge, if you, if you consciously, if you consciously think about it, that the pattern change has not happened for anyone uh, specifically or you specifically, it has happened for everyone, 
right and it's not also that this kind of paper or pattern of paper has been uh, given by ssc earlier and people might have been practiced in that no one is practiced in that right so whoever has practiced uh, whatever amount of in this pattern has ha, has done it in mocks which you have also done it so whether it is the newness of the pattern or maybe the difficulty level the difficulty level might also increase because i had been seeing a lot of youtube video conjecturing on what would happen in the new pattern how would uh, how you should go you see all of these uh, extra extra discussion on these na has created extra fears in the mind of students sometimes more discussion is not good sometimes more discussion leads to unwanted things in our life and and that's what happened with the new pattern of ssc cgl tier 2 so many youtubers have been talking about so much on youtube on uh, uh, you know uh, on facebook regarding this this uh, pattern change that students are really now confused what to do what not to do so my dear students the answer is very simple you need to have your plan in any competitive exam having a strategy having a plan helps and the strategy the plan should be according to your strengths as well as the nature of the paper right that's that's basic that we that's what we have been doing uh, time and again for every exam not only ssc cgl tier 2 for every exam so in our case the new pattern looks like this there is section 1 uh, uh, sorry session 1 which will have section 1 section 2 and inside each section there would be two modules module 1 which is the mathematical ability module 2 reasoning and total you would get 60 questions 60 minutes right that's 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 what it is similarly in the session 2 uh, section 2 module 1 module 2 english and gk 45 questions english 25 questions gk so you have 70 questions 60 minutes again right so how do you plan for this obviously there is section 3 also which is computer knowledge uh, module and uh, then the data entry module which is of 15 minutes so computer knowledge module would be inside that uh, you know uh, section uh, session 1 only section 1 only and it would be given uh, 15 minutes extra so basically what we are looking at at this stage is a paper which is primarily your reasoning english and uh, maths uh, driven paper ma english maths reasoning driven paper and some part of gk and computer knowledge so for computer knowledge in gk the computer knowledge the time is fixed but for general uh, knowledge the time can be fixed by you so at the max you should take 10 to 15 minutes at the max for those 25 questions so for you know the easy one is to divide the section uh, section 2 which is the english and the gk wala part because there you have clear demarcator that you will have to give more time to english right and it's it's <clears throat> it has the biggest weightage and it has to be given due in uh, diligence you have seen i have talked about this how english can become a king maker in this year's ssc cgl tier 2 so those who have followed my advice and have prepared their english well they would always have an advantage now what should you how much time should you give to english at least 45 minutes is the what you should give to english because 10 to 15 minutes you should be done with your general knowledge test right so or you can keep general knowledge test uh, uh, the last 10 15 minutes of that section and then and do 45 minutes for english in this 45 minutes you'll have to do around uh, you know 45 questions okay one hour for each section so 45 questions so 45 to 50 minutes 45 question one minute per question right so uh, as i told you that uh, you know when when you have this plan in your mind that i have one minute per question for a rc of five uh, questions i would uh, take 5 to 7 minutes but for a vocab question i will take less than 1 minute 20 seconds 30 seconds so the time that i save in here i would invest in rc or critical reasoning or para jumbles which would take a little more time so this plan has to be there but before that i'll have to go through the skeleton of the paper skeleton of the paper is what kind of questions have come so 2 minutes inside the paper i have talked about it in my uh, mock strategies and other lectures where i have talked about how to plan the paper Uh, in even inside the course i have uh, told you students how to plan the paper on the basis of the kind of questions that have come so use that use that knowledge as a weapon and plan your paper so you have a priority of attempt in front of you to so attempt in that priority 
The same thing holds true for section 1. So I have told you the, uh, uh, the, the section which is easy to divide. Easy to divide, not easy to do, easy to divide. Right. Now quant and reasoning. Now here you have equal weightages to both of these. Right. And you, how, how would you divide the time? Now that would depend upon the kind of question that is there. Right. If you see that the reasoning questions are like tier 1 and they would take less time. So then 30 questions would, uh, even if you do 20, 25 questions, you would take 20 uh, minutes at the max 25 minutes. So in that case, you can give 35 to 40 minutes to your quant because that normally takes a little more time. But if the reasoning questions nature, if you see, are more challenging, then you will have to look at the nature of the questions of the quant, which you know, which which might be uh, the case where you'll have to give equal equal time to both of them, right? So that would all depend upon what the nature of the reasoning questions are. If they are like tier one, where it is scoring, where it takes less time, then you would have a 35, 25 or a 40, 20 at the max. 40 to quant, 35 to quant and 25 to uh, or 22 reasoning, right? If it is, uh, you know, more or less the difficulty level is, are, are the same, then you'll give equal equal marks. So this is the reason, this is the way you would maximize your attempt. Your idea is to maximize your attempts. Obviously, when I say attempts, that means your attempts, your correct attempts, because whatever you do at, in the exam, you would think that you are doing it correctly and therefore you will attempt it. Na? So your target is to maximize your attempts and for that, having a priority of what questions to do first and what questions to do later on makes sense. You know, you can say this, sir, can we mix up maths and reasoning questions? Yes, you can. If you handle it well, you definitely can, right? So if there are, let's say, five syllogism questions and there are five arithmetic direct questions and you want to do them first because you're good at them. So do that 10 questions you are done with in 15, uh, 10 uh, minutes. That's okay with uh, me, right? But the time and the attempts need to be, uh, you know, in, in your mind. These two things need to be carried in your mind, okay? So that was the plan that I was talking about. So when you have a plan, what, what happens, you know, whatever difficulty level comes, whatever uh, 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 thing happens, you're already expecting the worst. Now, this is my third advice to you. Always expect the worst. You have a plan, you strategize your paper and go expect the worst inside the paper. So whenever the paper would come a little better than what you had expected, you would be surprised, pleasantly surprised by it. You know, what, what do people do? Students uh, pray to God that they get a paper that they have uh, 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 taken, right? Uh, they, uh, they have an idea about, they pray to God, ki, oh my God, please give us a, 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 a paper which is, which we know, which we, uh, which we have an idea about. But then what that, that prayer, what that does is that it builds up an expectation that I'm going to get a paper which is expect, on expected lines. And when, if the paper does not come on expected lines, they get fully surprised and they get a shock. Even if they can perform in that particular paper, because they have got something which they had not expected, they end up messing up that paper. So when you expect the worst, that thing never happens, right? Okay, so you're having a plan, you're expecting the worst, you would get the best juice out of the paper. Mark my words, right? So that's how you handle the fear number one. Now fear number two, which is fear of competition. 35% thinks that this fear is the biggest fear. So what should they do? Or for that matter, anyone who thinks competition is a big fear should do. How to handle it? First, treat it as an opportunity. My dear friends, there are 20,000 vacancies this time, huge vacancies. So technically, if you, if, if you use your logic, there is less competition. Now you tell me, sir, how is there less competition? Uh, if, if they have called proportionately they, that number of students in tier 2, na? yes, they have called. But you know what? Every year, same, almost same number of people prepare for SSC CGL. And out of that, sincere students for tier 2 number is more or less the same. Just because there is more vacancy, the sincere students uh, preparing for tier 2, that number does not increase uh, 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 highly. Na? That number will remain the same. So, if you are well prepared, in this huge vacancy scenario, the base, because your competition is not with everyone who has qualified for tier 1. 
your competition is with only those students who are well prepared for tier 2 right everyone who is qualifying tier 1 is not well prepared for tier 2 so out of let's say that is that number is 50000 that number was 50000 earlier and that number is 50000 this year also but last year there were let's say 5000 seats so one out of 10 would get in this year there are 20000 seats so the one out of 2.5 would get in so your chances is already uh, at a higher side okay so feel happy about it this knowledge should liberate you from this fear of competition this knowledge alone secondly you just need one seat na right so why do you think about everyone in the whole universe and thirdly if you are following the plan even if you miss upon one question or one part or even one sec session a section just assume that others have done worst why because you have been following the plan sincerely so if you had uh, 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 taken a question tried it out could not do it left it moved on to the next question right and and, and followed this pattern then what will happen is that you have ensured that you have attempted the maximum that was possible for you so if as a well prepared candidate you have attempted x assume that an average candidate would be uh, uh, attempting less now i would say that sir how can we assume that are baba inside the paper assuming that your competitor has done less would do more to your confidence than assuming that your competitor has done more whatever the reality is it does not matter but assuming that they have done worst would would keep you going for the next section for the next session and would ensure that you perform there at the optimum levels if you assume the worst that you have done worst and they have done good then your subsequent sections would also be uh, not at par with your capabilities clear right and the second thing that i want to see say here that please understand my dear friend in a, a competitive exam sometimes leaving questions can be better so you do not know you know in the last slide i talked about expect the unexpected so expect a surprise so what does it mean that in tier 2 uh, over the years had been a type of paper where almost all questions could be done this time it might be different this time it might be same it if it is the same then whatever you have been doing would help you if it is the if it is different the difficulty level questions are more then you have a stipulated time for every question depending on the difficulty level and the time that you have and your capability set so based on that if you are overshooting that time leave that question and move on to the rest it should not be that this time a difficult paper has come out of 30 questions of quant you can do only 15 16 uh, and 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 you uh, have assumed that because you used to do 25 30 questions in quant every time uh, and and you did 15 this time or 10 this time therefore you have done worst right you should not be assuming that secondly if you don't leave questions you will not be able to do that 15 also right so be prepared okay so the, the solution to fear 1 and fear 2 are interrelated also if you find okay now the last one fear 3 fear 3 fear of failure 25% one fourth of students feel that this is the biggest failure uh, fear of theirs how to handle it first of all if this fear you know fear of failure is what what would my parents say what would my family say what would my friends say that you have prepared for one year two year three years and you have not cracked it what would i do after this all of these unrelated inconsequential inconsequential to this test fears can ruin your paper to no ends so how do you handle it slap yourself out of it my dear friend slap yourself out of it obviously not physically slap yourself out of it because if you start slapping yourself uh, inside the paper hall right uh, uh, the uh, invigilator might uh, think that you have gone mad and and uh, they can dispatch you uh, out of the uh, examination hall but then what do you mean by slap yourself out of it is that give yourself a jolt are you, what are you doing man you shouldn't be doing this come out of it the best thing is to not let it happen at all so how do you avoid it in the first place you would avoid it at the first place by trying to be happy the next two days the next three days till the, till the time of your exam 
See, whatever you had to do regarding your preparation has already been done. Your, your practice, your concepts, everything is done. You're not going to do anything extra in these next two days that can change your, uh, you know, overall uh, scenario in the paper. No, nothing separate can be done in these next two days. So these next two days, you should be focusing on increasing your confidence, improving on your confidence, you know, feel good about yourself. Right. Feel happy about the preparation that you have done till now. You see, there is a fear that comes in your mind in the fear of competition only that are we prepared enough? This is not the time to think about it. This was the time to think about it one month back or two months back. Today, you should think that I am prepared the best I could have. Because that mental kick is going to support you inside the paper. That mental kick is going to uh, avoid these kinds of fears from ruining the chances in the paper. Because we know na, that a lot of times, even if I am above average prepared, inside the paper, if I perform well, I have 100% chance. I, we know that, na, right? So many times has happened with us also, or maybe with people that we know. So why not to have that attitude with ourselves, right? And the most important thing, inside the paper, you enjoy this opportunity. You have got the opportunity to be in the top you know, 50,000, 1 lakh students of this country, you are, have qualified tier 1, are in tier 2, are, are, are sitting for tier 2, right? So, so this is an opportunity, enjoy it, give your best there, not because you want a job here, yes, you want a job, everyone wants a job here and that's why they are sitting for the exam. You have an additional motivation and the additional motivation is to perform to the best of our cap capabilities and be happy about our performance. It's just like a game. It's just like a game of cricket, right? You know, you must have seen that the people who enjoys the game most performs the best. Even great players who did not enjoy that day's game could not give their best performance. That happens, na? And that's true for us also, right? Okay? So, these are the ways where how you can handle or conquer these three fear, uh, three fears of yours and... Uh, and you would ensure that you have uh, performed your best. And that's what we need. If you have prepared sincerely, your best is more than enough, my dear friend. More than enough, right? And when you are inside the paper, think yourself to be a superman or a supergirl. Because inside the paper, if you, are if you have planned your paper well, prioritized your attempts well, and you are following your plan, your strategy, you then if, if 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 something wrong happens feel that this wrong has happened with everyone don't let doubt creep in you inside the paper right okay so thank you very much and all the best